Okay. In communicative grammar too, we also have different different grammar structures that need to be analyzed. And in this opportunity, we are studying the simple present tense. Remember that this grammar tense is used to tell about things that happen again and again in the present. For example, when you are talking about habits, regular occurrences, customs, and routines, you need to use the simple present tense. The simple present tense is also used to tell about facts, about non-action verbs in affirmative and negative statements. Later on, we are seeing the following examples. He talks on the phone. Notice here that you are using an S at the end of the verb because you are, you are saying something that, that represents the present tense. We run every day. In this case, you don't need an S because you are talking about we, which is a plural, not a third person. And the computer costs a lot of money. It is also one of the, of the tenses that need an S because you are talking about the computer, which is a third person singular. When talking about uses, notice that the present tense is used for facts, for affirmative statements, negative statements, third person singular, which was the previous explanation. The verbs have do and go are not regular. And in this case, it means that you don't necessarily need to add just an S. For example, have, haves with an S here. This is not correct. Have has its sound uh, third person, which is has, does, or goes. These verbs are not regular, and that is why they don't, they don't necessarily are used in that way. Let's see some examples. This is a fact. The first example is the simple present used as a fact. The sun appears every day. It means that every day you are watching, you can see the sun on the sky, and this is a fact, something that you can't change. And you are using an S here, the verb with an S, because you are talking about it, which is the sun, a third person. I want a new car. This is a desire. He works in a hospital. They don't live in Loja, or she does not go to the dentist. In this case, notice that you need to use do plus E and S, which is used as does, plus not plus go, which is a, a simple form, plus a complement. These examples are very common in the simple present form. For example, if you change, he does not play basketball. This is another example, or many, many other examples that are related with this structure. And notice and remember uh, the uses of the simple present tense, and especially the S that needs to be included at the end of each verb, especially when you are talking about he, she, or it. We use do or does before the subject. We use the base form or the verb after the subject. This is important and is related with the previous explanation. Do not use do or does for yes, no questions with be. Notice the following examples in this slide. Do you play tennis? In this case, you are using do because you are talking about you, which is the second person in, in the list of personal pronouns. Does he have a computer? Here you are using does because the third person is he, which means that you can also use she or it instead of he in this second example. Yes, he has one. It is incorrect to use do you are in this case, which is a structure that does not correspond to grammar to grammar or English grammar that we are studying now. Do you are is incorrect. In this case, the correct one is, are you from Ecuador? The, the simple present form of be, are you from Ecuador? Or in this case, do you come, for example, if you change the verb, do you come from Ecuador? Or maybe, the, uh, does she live in Ecuador? This is another example that can be used with do or does. Regarding WH questions, remember that they ask for information. And a WH word plus do or does, as, as I already mentioned, plus a subject, plus the base form of the verb, are used to write just no questions. 
There are an different yes no questions, for example, those ones that are used with who or what plus the third person singular form of the verb, who plus subject, whom and whom plus an object. In this case, the following examples have been prepared for you. Where do you go to school? Remember here we are using do because we have you. When does he come? We are using this auxiliary does and remember that when you are using auxiliaries here or the third person, it is not necessary to write an S here because you are using it and it replaces the S that you would need if you were talking about a simple sentence in English. Who helps you? This is a different case and pay attention to this. When you have a question with who, it is not necessary to write do or does. It depends, but here it it is just correct to write an S to the verb. For example, who plays soccer? Who helps you? Who goes with you? It depends, but not necessarily with do and does because this is an exception. Who does she help or what helps you fall asleep? These are some examples in which you can notice that it depends on you as, as the person that is trying to study and practice these structures to choose the correct ones. It could be do or does, or it could be just the verb with an S depending on the person that you are talking about. And remember that if you are talking about who, it means that you need an S in this case, or also you need an auxiliary. This is all the explanation about this gram grammar tense.